Hi everybody, my name is Damien Keel, campus principal of the Prep to Four campus Hi. of Yarrawonga College. Um, thank you very much for coming. It's a very cold and miserable night out there, but thanks for making the effort and we really appreciate your attendance to come and have a listen to us. Now, first thing I need to do is introduce some really important people. First person to my right is Jess Laws. Jess is actually our <coughs> Prep coordinator. Wendy Stevenson, prep teacher and numeracy leader of the campus. Megan Ray, leading teacher. Kaz Malavi has the uh, camera there, taking this and making me feel very uncomfortable. Um, and somewhere outside, Ross Wilson is the five to eight campus principal. He's come along as well. Um, and some really important people. Joel O'Dwyer is 10 minutes late. The uh, O'Dwyer's are down to one car this evening. and. Um, Joel's the unfortunate one that misses out just for a little while. So, Liam Tanner. Liam is our campus captain at the Peter Ford campus, one of our campus captains. Susie Levesque, who's also a campus captain of the Peter Ford campus, and Hayley Bigger, who is a leader up at the 5 to 8 campus. We thought it would be a nice idea to get someone from the 5 to 8 campus to come along and just have a chat with you. Um, what they've prepared is off the cuff, and actually, Nina Hanna is up. Oh, sorry. You're right, Nina. <laughs> Nina Hannah's up the back there as well. And Ross has just walked in the door at the back there. Ross is the campus principal of the 5 to 8 campus. So, welcome everybody. Really important decision uh, you're about to make about the future of your children. And having been there and done that with my own kids, with our own kids, I know it's a big decision and it's one that you need to carefully consider. So. We're going to give you some information tonight. We're not going, we've changed our format a little bit. We used to stand up here and talk at you for ages, pretty much. Tonight, there's only a couple of us speaking and then we'll throw over to you guys so you can ask us lots of questions. Because by you asking us questions, we get to exactly what it is you want to know. Just really briefly though, we've broken our chat up tonight, Megan and I, into a few different areas and you'll have seen any ads in the paper or anything we've put out this year about our prep transition is the hand with the five really important areas and things that we really value at the Peter Four campus and right throughout Yarrawonga College. So literacy and numeracy obviously is a big one and it's one that we work really hard to try and improve our teaching practices and it's one that we're going to be investing considerable time and effort on professional learning um, and making sure that we're covering the really important aspects of the curriculum that we need to cover to make sure our kids can read and write and obviously add up. So we're actually applying for grants because we feel that, and the research is telling us, that students are arriving at school these days with less oral language skills. Now, I'm sure plenty of you have seen Families, or mums and, kid, and kids in, in shopping trolleys, or dads and kids in shopping trolleys with iPhones or iPads. And a lot of our families, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with it, there's a lot of our families that are using iPads, to, the, the children are using iPads to, um, to learn with, but sometimes to keep them occupied. What that does is it doesn't give children the opportunities to speak as much as what we used to when we were kids. Mum and Dad in the shopping trolley, not very often my dad, but mainly Mum, in the shopping trolley at the supermarket, she would be talking to me about what we were buying. That's probably disappeared. So that's where a lot of our work is starting. We have a play group on Monday mornings that I'm not sure whether many of you have been able to come along to, but that runs from 9.30 to 11. And that program we're trying to evolve into more of an oral language based program to try and help families with their children and developing those really essential oral language skills. So, I might hand over to Megan, and Megan will talk to you a bit about our values program. Hi, um, I'll, I'll start with our values. Across the P12 College, our values are all the same. We have a focus on integrity, cooperation, honesty, respect, and responsibility. So that's from, nine, uh, from prep to 12. We, um, we actually have a PBS program, which is a positive behaviour program, and that's across the board as well, from um, prep to 12. The PBS program is fantastic, and it's a program that uses corrective strategies. So we have star charts up in our room. Jess, your star chart? It's over on the door. It's behind oh, the door. And when children in the class um, are observed doing the, having the correct behaviours, they are actually given 
a star, one of these stars, and they keep these stars and it's marked up on the board there. And when they receive 10, you get a postcard home to find out what they've been doing and they'll tell you why they've got the star. When they hit 20, they actually come up to the office to see myself or Damien with a little icy pole token and they get an icy pole. So these behaviours are, for example, we've been working on um, making sure our toilets are a nice, quiet, safe place. So um, if we've witnessed children or hit, don't hear a lot of noise when they come out, we might give them a star. We've decorated them now with beautiful butterflies and all that. So your little people, when they come, can feel safe and secure when they're in the toilets. I know it doesn't seem like a <coughs> big deal, but it really is when you've got little people going to the toilets with great four kids as well. Another thing we've been focusing on is our corridors. And we've been making sure that the children are zipping up their bags and putting everything in their bags. And we actually have a trophy now that um, we give out at assembly. And we go through the corridor through the week and we check the bags and think, oh yeah, this grade's looking good and give a little mark. And at, at, on a Friday, we announce who the winner is. And it's been quite well received. Um, even the teachers are giving us a bit of a nudge to make sure their grade wins and they've got the tightest bag. But a, Massive trophy gets um, given to the, the grade that wins and the excitement is unbelievable. They all sit there with their fingers crossed and when we announce it there's loud, loud cheers and lots of cheering. So that's a really a great way to make children feel connected to their school. Another great thing that we do is we actually have lunchtime activities. So on a Monday it's chess. Um, on a Tuesday we, this week we're offering loom band activities. Loom bands are very popular, popular at the moment. So it's a BYO loom band activity and they come into the art room. And on a Wednesday we have singing group and we also have computer lab and our library is open. And then on a th um, Thursday we have box construction. And in all of those sessions we've had about 60 children attend those. So they just come in on their own free will into the um, art rooms and they can come and go as they please and they create the most amazing things. And it's a really good program because some children just don't like it outside. Some children don't like to be outside for the whole playtime. So they can come in with us, have a little play inside and then head outside. And on cold days they love to come in as well. So they just love it and it feels like it's a real, it's a real sort of um, nice little community in there as well. So. Um, I think that's workshop, or you can probably talk about workshop. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Um, so we're at Yarrawonga College Peter 12, and we have three campuses at the moment, but obviously we're working towards all being on one site together. That's the ultimate goal. And of course, Kim's arrived over to my, the left hand side of the room over there. Kim Stewart's our college principal, and Kim, <laughs> along with everybody at our college, is waiting for that to happen, which shouldn't be too far down the track now, Kim. Well, the first stage of it won't be too far off. Yes, yeah, so we're really looking forward to all working on that one site. But at the moment, we are three campuses, and the real advantage for us at the moment is that we are a Peter Four campus with 330 odd students on our campus. We used to have 450. Now, this is not a huge campus, so for us to go back to Peter Four, it means a couple of things. Firstly, just logically, it means there's a lot less kids in the yard and it's a lot safer. The second thing that is a real winner for us is that we can really focus heavily on the right work for kids in the early years around the literacy and numeracy stuff that I was talking to you about a minute ago. So today, this morning, we were really fortunate to be able to do a tour throughout the school and visit all of the different classrooms. When you walk into a classroom at Yarrawonga College, you will see a differentiated curriculum. What that means is that it's very different to the way we were taught when we went to school it's very much like what we're doing to you right now, which we kind of don't like doing, but it's the best way for us to talk to a lot of people at once. Um, that doesn't happen anymore. Welcome, Joel. <laughs> In any classroom around this school, um, you will see groups of children working at their own level. Rather than working too far above where they're supposed to be or too far below, they're actually being a given a real chance to be able to learn at their level and improve. That will happen in every classroom around the school and the people that were here for today's session were able to witness that firsthand. The other thing we've developed at the Peter Four campus over a number of years is a really good screening process whereby we identify students' needs. So that when your child enters this campus <coughs> and right through Yarrawonga College, their needs are being identified before they hit the ground. So in the first four weeks of term one, in 2015, your students will stay home on every Wednesday for that month. 
and the teachers will do individual assessments with your children to identify where they're at. Most important part of teaching and planning is that you identify your starting point so that you're able to put in place the right teaching for where your students need to go to. The other thing that's really good for prep students is it's not uncommon to hear stories of parents taking kids home uh, on hot, sunny February afternoons and they're asleep before they hit the main street of Yarrawonga from here because they do get tired. So we need to manage that really carefully and the Wednesday off every week for the first four weeks is a real advantage because it is at the hottest time of the year. The other thing that we have that we value are specialist classes. So each of your students in prep to year four have an hour of physical education and an hour of art. Students in prep to year two have an hour of perceptual motor program a fortnight, which is a program that helps kids understand their body in space and the way it moves around. And the three, four students also have an hour of science a fortnight as well. Now that's a primary connections program, the science program. It's a literacy based science program that um, is brilliant. So Courtney Gowd is our special science teacher. And really that's all I'm going to, the, all the information I'm going to throw at you. What we might do is get Jess to uh, have a chat or we go to the students first. Jess? Um, what would you like to do? Can we have a chat? Now these, <coughs> come up the front and you come up too Liam. Now these guys, Susie and Liam, are in year four. They're our campus captains. Uh, they are campus captains, captains of term one this year. So we have two campus captains every term. This term's captains at the moment are away on holiday. I'm not sure where Kyra is, I think in Bali, is that right? Um, Susie and Liam were both asked Friday afternoon if they could put some of the things down that they would like to talk about the Peter Four campus. So this is what they have said. Susie, you can go first. Move forward a bit, girl. Hi, my name is Susie Lovett, and I was term one school captain. This is a great school to be at. There are many things I could work for you many opportunities like school captain in SRC. Well done, Susie. Hi, my name is Liam Tanner and I'm going to talk about the Peter Four campus. Our values are integrity, cooperation, honesty, respect and responsibility. Our school has a buddy program every year. It is when year four students work with preps. It helps the preps it helps the prep settling. Our school has a school captain, a sports captain, a student council and a community, community workshop. The workshop has fantastic projects. They include woodwork, painting, sewing and other fun crafts. Every year our school has a big breakfast and walk to school day. And parents were allowed to come and have breakfast with their children. All these reasons are why Yarrawonga P4 is a great school. Thanks, Liam. Well done. Now, Joel has already been here today. Hayley um, has come up for the first time tonight. So, I asked Joel today about a typical day at Yarrawonga College, five to eight campus. Do you want to have another word about that? And maybe, Hayley, you can add to what Joel said. Yep. In the morning, you get there and the bell goes at five to nine and then you line up and then the teachers tell you what elective you've got. You might have to go over to the high school and do metal work, artwork, IT or an elective or you could do literacy and maths like Mr Keel said, TRN level and then you have recess and then you have another elective or something and then you have lunch and then after lunch you got integrated studies and every term you get a classroom a task where you have to build a PowerPoint or something like that and you have to present it at the class at the end of the term. So then we do that for the last hour. Well done, Gerald. Thanks. And I asked you today what your favourite elective was. What was that? Metal. Metal work. <laughs> what about you, Hayley? My favourite. Yeah. Sport. What would be your favourite other thing to do at the five to eight campus during the day other than the electives? Um, I like recess and lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Most kids do, I reckon. Most kids do. And the 
teachers don't mind them either sometimes. <laughs> um, all right, so what, what do you do at recess and lunchtime at the 5 Day campus? Um, we can either play on the playground, play TV, talk, play netball, there's cricket or footy. Good, so you've got plenty of room to play sport and that yep. sort of stuff up at the 5 Day campus? Yep. Yep, footy oval? Yep. And new basketball courts? Yep. Yeah. All right. Um, has anyone got any questions for Joel and Hayley? How did you find transitioning from one campus to another campus? Was it scary starting again or was it okay? I reckon it was good because we had one transition day and we got to meet all the teachers. And they were really nice and they like, all just like manage you to what you want and they treat you really nicely. So. And we do have a few transition days in term, starting term three and then again in term four, so that the kids feel comfortable by the time they're up. By the time they get there, it's not new. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. What about you, Harley? Did you find transition? Um, it wasn't scary. It was just exciting going to a new school with, like, older kids. Yeah, good. Any other questions for Joel and Harley? Nope. Good on you. Thanks. Right, on, Jess. Okay. Hi. Um, as Damien said, I've taken over the role as transition coordinator this year. So. Um, a few weeks ago we sat down together and really thought about what, as a parent, what you want to know when you're about to send your child off to school for the first time. Um, so at the start on the slideshow you might have seen that three key areas that we thought was that you want to know that your child is happy, has friends and is going to learn. So um, to start off with, I'll just talk a little bit about how we try and ensure that your child, when they come to school, that they come to school happy and that they want to come to school. So. Next year when they get here, um, each prep student gets their own year four buddy. So that buddy comes down and helps their prep person with all little jobs that might seem minuscule to us, but they're big to little prep people who have to start getting their lunch boxes out of their bags, unpacking, opening chip packets, going to the toilet, finding the toilet out in the playground, or even just looking after them in the playground. So for the first term, and sometimes into the second term, we have our prep preps working with their year four buddies on a daily basis. So they'll come down each day about 15 minutes before recess or lunch and sit with their preppy and talk to them, um, sit with their group of friends so that they're getting to know um, who they play with and so that they can help them when they're in their playground. So. Um, that's a really positive way to start the, um, the year off so that they have, they're feeling that safe and secure when they get to school. Um, a lot of the time the um, preps become independent before the year fours are ready so they're ready to give them the ditch and um, <laughs> the year fours are still trying to hold on so they really, they love that job if they move on from that. Um, also in the prep rooms uh, we have an open, and across the campus we have an open door policy so um, if you ha any, ever have any issues, we encourage you to come in and speak to us. It might seem like a little issue to, to you, but it's a huge issue to your little person at home. And we'd rather you came in and spoke to us before it became bigger than it needs to be. So we welcome you to come into the classroom before and after school. Um, also, coming into the classroom each day to do readers, um, help, helping out in the classroom. So we really encourage that home-school connection so you can see what your child's doing in the classroom and then you can carry that over at home. You'll be surprised at how um, excited our little preppies get to have their mum or dad or gran or whoever it is coming in to do some reading with them at school. So um, also uh, volunteer programs. So along with parents volunteering in the classrooms we also have a really big volunteer network up at the workshop. So as I think it was Liam talked about the workshop program that Michelle Klaus runs up in the old courthouse. Um, we have a huge network of volunteers that come in on a daily basis and teach kids to paint, knit, yes. amazing things that I probably mosaics. can't do. Yeah, mosaics. All the beautiful artworks that you see on all three campuses, a lot of it comes from our, our own kids that are making that each day with um, support from Michelle. So, um, also, the other point was that well, a point for any parent is that you would like to know that your child comes to school and they have friends. So we have really strong connection with the kinders and we, before we go ahead and put your child into a class, we speak to them about their friendship groups, try and pair them up with um, who they've gone to kinder with, their, see who they're close friends with um, and try and group them according to that so that they don't come to school and walk into a classroom where they don't feel like they know anyone. Um, 
as the year goes on, we try and work together as um, the prep grades come into this. It's a huge room, so quite often um, next door will come in for lunch and we really encourage the kids to form friendships across the three grades or however many grades there are so that the following year that they've formed more, their, their friendship group has expanded. Um, also, when we have our mass groups later in the year, as Damien was saying, we try and target the kids to their needs so they work in, in their NFA mass groups, which means you know, they'll be working with kids at their level, but it also means they'll be working with kids from different classrooms, so it's also building up those friendships. Um, and Damien's already touched on the learning aspect. We have a really high priority on our literacy and numeracy programs, so um, that's happening on a daily basis and, um, and a differentiated curriculum, so we are constantly working. If you walked into the classroom, at any time of the day really, you'd see group work happening of kids working at their own level. So, you, Jess. Thank you. Jess, Jess mentioned um, the volunteers program and the workshop. We just celebrated our volunteers for, as a part of National Volunteer Week and we, had, we invited 48 volunteers, that's how many volunteers we have that come in and help read and help out at the workshop. So, we really encourage people to come in. If you would like to, we'd love you to, or if you know of someone that can come in and give us a hand. We value our volunteers, and they really do do an amazing job, and we wouldn't be able to offer a lot of the stuff we do offer without those people, so we really do value them. Now, we can't do a walk around because it's dark, but what we might do, rather than me talk at you, can one of you guys explain how the playground works? For example, where the Peter two, the prep to twos are allowed, where the three fours are allowed, and all that. Would anyone like to have a crack at that? Go for it. <laughs> um, the Peter two is from that little path along there, all the way around to yep. the port old portables. There's a little grass area out in the far corner. But they're not allowed on the big playground because it's too high and they don't want to fall off. Because it's and the three fours need their own little area. They're not allowed on the big part of the oval, but they're a little bit down the back they're allowed on. So we separate things. <laughs> we separate. You've done a good job. You so, uh, yeah, no, but you've done well. There's all junior playgrounds all around that side of the school. So there's a sand pit out here and then the junior playground. So that's that's yes, the Peter twos and the three to fours have got their own playground over that side of the school, because it is, it's larger equipment, we don't want any of the little kids to get hurt. And um, it's, we find that separating the kids in terms of their age is a lot more conducive to the kids all getting on really well, because little kids don't understand, especially when it was Peter Six, a little prep doesn't quite understand what a grade six is talking about, because they're at different levels of understanding. So, yeah, we do that on purpose. Can someone explain the canteen? Come on, mate. <laughs> Well, the canteen is a place where you buy food. And how do you do that? Uh, you bring money. <laughs> you bring money. And what if you want a lunch order? What do you do? Uh, you put it in a little paper bag and you put it in your lunch order bag. Beautiful. How many days a week is the canteen open? Five days a week, yes. So the canteen's open five days a week and we have a variety of foods. The canteen lady does a terrific job. So if anyone needs canteen meals, it's open five days. Thanks, Liam. What else do we need to talk about? Um, we, do, we do have small class sizes and we can guarantee we'll do our very, very best to keep class sizes to a minimum. This year we have three prep classes and we've managed to keep those numbers under 20. Or actually, Jess, I think you're on 20 now, which is pretty hard to find. Unless you're in a tiny rural school, you'd be struggling to find less than those numbers. So we have 20, about 20 in each class. 20, um, 18, and 18, yeah. So we'd be hoping for similar sorts of sizes next year. And across um, up to grade four, our highest is 24. So um, yeah. all of them are below 24. Yeah. So, all students enter with different levels of need. Some students obviously are excelling. Some students that enter our campus, our college, have learning difficulties and learning needs. So over a period of years, we work really hard on trying to identify those students and then try and put in place programs to bring those students up, their levels up, so that they're operating effectively in classrooms. So what we've done this year, and we keep improving, we're now catering for about 
18 students this term um, in terms, so we have a reading recovery program for students that are struggling, then we also have an intervention program. So Megan has a group, I have a group, um, then we have volunteers that have a, a group, our college principal Kim Stewart has a group, um, teacher aid has a group, and then we have about three or four volunteers that come in and take students for intervention as well. So that's one-on-one, what can be one-on-one, on one? One on one, and we do that for about 40 minutes a session. So we're seeing good results and kids are improving and that's what we're on about. We want to try and catch all of the kids and the less amount of kids that we have slipping through that net, we're improving all the time. And once we get every single one of them, we know we're doing our job and we're getting close. I'm not saying every student uh, will excel, but I'm saying we're doing everything we can to pick up the needs of individual students that come through our school, and we work really hard to meet those needs. Anything else? Are there any questions? Um, we're moving up from Melbourne, hopefully before school starts. Would you suggest he be in kinder up here for at least a term for a bit of transition? You do the best you can with what with where you are, yeah. and um, we have we provide the opportunity if you come up from Melbourne to come in on the afternoons. We're already doing that with kids that are coming to us that are already in grade three. Yeah. Um, so they'll come to us for a couple of afternoons before the end of this term to start next term. So there's always those yeah. opportunities as well. Mm -hmm. Transition days as well. Yeah. I'll, I'll make sure they're yeah. absolutely yeah. new so, kids in kinder before you got mm. here. I've had kids come in from other schools before that have transitioned with kids from kinder yeah. and they've coped really well. well. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Right. So you'll find in that green pack there actually, just while we're talking about transition dates, there's a list of transition dates and times and all that sort of stuff. Are there any other questions? Not everyone feels comfortable. <laughs> I've got a question. Yeah, go for it, mate. Um, <laughs> Mate, not everyone does. That's the way it is. That's okay. Um, what, what we might do, because not everyone is comfortable asking questions in big groups like this, um, we separated into smaller groups this morning and had a bit of a walk around and that was more effective because we actually got a fair bit of conversation, which is what we want. Um, on that table at the back there, there are... Uh, information packs and there's also newsletters there. I just wanted to show what our newsletter looks like. Um, more often than not there is information in our newsletter about learning and current areas that we're working on. Um, for example in that newsletter, it's the latest one which I think it is, there'll be information on literacy practices within the school and the big six which is what we're working on at the moment. So that'll change on a fortnightly basis. The newsletter comes out once a fortnight on a Thursday. If you're interested in us sending, us, sending you a copy for the rest of the year, there's a couple of pieces of paper up there that you can put your email addresses on and we'll send them to you. Either that or put your mailing address on it and we'll send it out. Alright, what we might do is grab some groups of people and just have a walk up the hallway and have a look at the library. Sorry we can't go out and have a look at the playground.